Hey everyone, welcome to Generation Gamers. This is our weekly podcast. I am Mike Mullis, aka Stinger NLG. Got with me the All Star Crew. Mason here, aka Signar Two and Two. Yo, Stan, aka Loyal Valor. And uh, you got Dave here, aka GT Marauder. And Jesse, aka Nostos Algos Three Twelve. How's it going, guys? You guys doing good? I'm doing pretty yeah, good. Doing well. we, actually, we got some nice weather finally. It's like Hell seven yeah. five, man. It's really nice. You got all the windows open. It feels good. It's like a great weekend for me to be sick. So if you hear me hacking up a lung on the podcast, uh, that's because that's because this is kicking my ass. But, <laughs> yes. uh, I'll do my best to mute it out when I know it's coming. <laughs> so all right, well, we've uh, it's been a couple weeks since we've been together. Uh, you guys did a uh, fantastic retro uh, podcast last week. If, uh, if our listeners haven't checked it out. Uh, after they're done listening to this one, of course, check it out. It was really, really good. Thank you, thank you. I had fun uh, talking talking to some old games, especially Loyal, and had Siren Seven One Seven on there, and then Jesse over here. We had him on there. It was definitely a lot of fun, you know, just to kind of kick back, shoot the shit, and talk about old times. Yeah, I'm sorry I missed it. Uh, that's all right, no problem. Don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because I, I I have a I have that kind of that kind of gaming history. And, Somebody, um, a, commu- a PR person that uh, passed away from um, an old company, Access Communications. They're still around, but uh, she was a Sega Genesis, a Sega Dreamcast PR person, and then went to Edelman to work on um, Xbox. Uh, most recently, with Golden Harris working uh, Nintendo, um, and so uh, it gave me a, an opportunity to kind of reflect back on. Um, you know, I she wasn't my main rep. But I remember working with her a little bit, especially when she came to Edelman before um, Naughty Meyer, who's now at Naughty Dog, took over for Xbox uh, PR for us. And um, I came across my old Dreamcast website on uh, the, uh, the old uh, Wayback Machine. It was surreal because it was like 1999 and I had children yet. Um, I didn't have, I wasn't married. It just back memories. So listening to the retro podcast last week, did the same for me. So you guys did a great job. Cool. Thank you. We should do something like that again, you know, eventually. Yeah, definitely. All right, so let's get to it. Um, since we haven't been together to talk to talk shop, a um, lot's been going on. Uh, we'll just take a couple of things that are kind of the big things. You know, we haven't had a chance to talk about Phil Spencer yet. And uh, for those who live under a rock and haven't actually caught up with the uh, news out there, waving your hand. Loyal. <laughs> well, Phil Spencer was named head of Xbox, the entire division. He um, he was promoted. He was the head of Microsoft Game Studios, and now he's running the whole show, hardware, software, everything. And um, that move has been widely praised across the entire gaming sphere. Dude is a gamer, and he has done nothing in the last two weeks but stress games, 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 games. I've heard that. I, I did. I see him. I did see that he had did an interview talking about how they're. I mean, for one, it's it's astonishing because Xbox One they're already focusing on games, games, games. I mean, I, I mean revert back to last E3. That was all about games. And then even now, he said a couple weeks ago they're running out of time. They have to cut some things from their 90 minute slot because they're going over the 90 minutes. And you know, for a second, honestly, in my opinion, I. I mean, in my thoughts, I really thought that they were, this E3, they were going to focus on some games, but then they were kind of mixed up a little bit with some maybe entertainment stuff. And then I thought Sony was going to pull a Microsoft and just go games, 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 games. I mean, I, I wouldn't have been upset if they did. I mean, for one, we still have a lot of games that we know that are coming out this year. But I kind of thought, okay, you know, they blew everyone away last year. They'll have a good E3 this year. You know, but they'll probably bring in some entertain, entertainment stuff. Well, I'm clearly wrong <laughs> since, like you said, Phil Spencer, that's all he's been talking about is games, games, games. And it's crazy now now knowing that this E3 is going to be all about the games, 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 games. So well, he said something that was really profound. He said, you can't have the TV and the entertainment if people aren't buying the console because of the game content. And all that all that means nothing if you have, if you don't have the games to get you to buy the the system. He's right. Well, he is right. I mean, for one, the entertainment's already there. So I mean, honestly, all they really needed was the reveal, since a lot of savages still revert back to the reveal of the Xbox One. They already have everything coming. 
Oh, they have all the entertainment coming. They know. I mean, they'll do these little segments, especially with the uh, Halo. I mean, I think they have that Halo series and being worked on. Then there's another Halo, uh, entered some inner like video or something like that coming out. And that's was that's kind of a good idea. Like the whole Xbox, do- their first documentary about the uh, ET Atari cartridges that they just announced that through you know just an article. They're and that's good that they're doing that instead of spending time in E3. That's how I'd rather be. If it has to do with entertainment, as in like TVs and movies and music wise, just make a little press release. But at E3 and big events, keep it on the games. I mean, do you guys agree? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, do I, man. But of course, we all know the savages are, uh, you know, listen to the games, games, games that we've been bringing. They're just going to focus on the five minute PR speak of the Halo show they're going to make and then totally forget about all the games that are coming to Xbox One. But, you know, that's how it is. But it doesn't matter now anyway, so. And it's going to be a, a fairly good fall. Uh, even even if, and we'll, we're going to get to game remakes, but, I mean, we still have stuff like Sunset Overdrive, Quantum Break. Um, Fable. Things like that that are coming. We got Fable come. Fable Legends is coming out in the fall. I mean, and then not even counting some of the, you know, I mean, I know there are some indie games coming out, but there's some, you know, big games coming out on digital download also. I mean, you know, like I said, they had, like, Crimson Dragon, which was a digital download only. Killer Instinct, which was a digital download. Speaking of Killer Instinct real quick, I mean, since, you know, Jesse did the review with us, and uh, so did Sacrifice did, a lot of people are kind of disregarding that game. But that's a, I think that's kind of a low thing to do for one. Evo, that Evo tournament that's going to be happening here in a couple months, they already accepted that into their tournament. That's big. A lot of people don't understand. That's big for a game, a fighting game that just came out, and how well Double Helix did at balancing that game out. And even with future, I mean, you, even with future patches, you said uh, Jesse that they, they fixed the game to yep. where with the jail, and then they, it's just a little bit more smoother. That goddamn jail. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, the thing is, like, even Halo for as long as Halo's been around, I think was it Halo Three was the only one that was in MLG a little bit. But they, like I said, to have Killer Instinct at Evo, that's big. I mean, they don't even have Blaze Blue in that in that tournament. Blaze Blue has been around for a lot longer than Killer Instinct. But I just wanted to hit on that real quick. That's a big deal. A lot of people need to understand that Killer Instinct is, is being taken as a serious fighter now. But it's being taken over by a very serious fighting game developer, too. Yep. Um, and so as, as uh, Double Helix uh, moves out... Um, I'm sorry, and the name is slipping me. Hit me, Mason. What's the name of the new deck? Uh, see, I don't remember. <laughs> I thought, oh, man. Then it double, not Double Helix. Uh, oh, because Double Helix is going to Amazon. Amazon, because Amazon bought them. Uh, do you remember what they were called? Did you read that? Oh, man. Is it Microsoft? Dude, no. It's someone no, no longer. Microsoft, it's, um, isn't it? Well, I'm pretty sure it'll come to our head here now. It'll come to our head in a little bit. <laughs> Iron Galaxy. Iron okay. Galaxy game. Yeah, because they helped do... Uh, Street Fighter Ultra, Ultra Street Fighter Three or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, yeah, they ported um, uh, uh, Street Fighter Three, Third Strike, and they actually uh, also ported Marvel vs. Capcom Origins. Yep. So uh, wow. they're in good hands. Even Phil Spencer said that their Microsoft Game Studios is committed to supporting the game. Also, even though Iron Galaxy is taking over, but with Xbox behind them, you know, the, it's definitely in good hands. So. So you know, Phil's gonna bring a little more of a gaming centric feel to uh the microsoft game side and he also wants to bring on uh more more activity in the pc market so what i'm hoping that that uh what that brings about is maybe that cross play that's been missing uh you know, there's there's still developers out there that like to bring out games on the sony platform because they're the cross play between ps3 and ps4 uh, and ps4 and pc um uh, Microsoft needs to get on that, and I'm thinking that Phil, uh, Phil's gonna gonna work that out. We already saw it with Shadowrun for the Xbox 360, and it, that worked just fine. And I think you're seeing it a little bit with Project Spark, as you can go across, uh, you can go across different platforms to create and play the games. And now they have the Universal Windows apps, which can run along the Xbox One, PC, and phone, Windows Phone. So. Crossplay may be coming as a result of uh, him taking over. Well, that's... so people will be able to um, like play on Xbox 360 and Xbox One, and you know you won't have to 
Well, like, I don't know about. Kind of play together. Well, I know with Project Spark, can you play with each other, or is it just cross-platform? As in, I build a world on Xbox One. Uh, I'm gonna go in my bedroom and restart working on it on my tablet. Is that what you? I think that's the only. That's what. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think what he was talking about was Shadowrun, where that was a game where PC people and Xbox 360 people were able to play against each other. Um, same thing with Final Fantasy 11, and same thing with 14. Um, I know Final Fantasy 11 on Xbox 360, you were also able to play with the PC people. Um, now, whether Elder Scrolls Online coming out in June, I don't know. I don't. There has been word. I don't think they're going to do that. I mean, I think a lot of. I mean. I think a lot of developers are still going to kind of wait because I think Shadowrun, it did work, but at the same time, though, it was kind of botched. And then the game got shut down, and then the company was gone. But with the help of DirectX 12 for cross-platform, making it easier, and with already's Project Spark, I think they'd definitely be able to, you know, they can definitely make it work if they choose a game. I mean, there was games that were... I remember they game Huxley. Do you guys remember that? That was supposed to be... A cross-platform multiplayer for I think it was a what they call it, an MMO first-person shooter. It was it was like a just a cross-platform between PC and 360 people, but that game eventually got canned. Yeah, I was wondering whatever happened to that. That game, game looked awesome too. It definitely looked awesome. When I remember when that was in the early life of 360, man. I mean, like really early. So, Put a lot of work to it. <laughs> let's segue that into uh, into E3 because um, you know, obviously we know what Microsoft's bringing. Uh, I think we have a good idea of what Sony is going to bring. But Sony's going to Sony's going to pull what Microsoft did. They're going to be all about the games because they know the hype they got last E3, and they even though they had indie games, they really didn't have a lot of big games to talk about. This year, right. they're going to. I guarantee you, they will. Everything they show will be a game. They will. What have, are they going to show? I mean, we kind of we kind of have an idea of, of some of what Microsoft's going to show. And they do have some unannounced titles, but what's... I mean, obviously, Uncharted is going to be there. Last of Us is going to be there. What else? I don't think... Honestly, I don't think they'll have spent a lot of time at Last of Us since E3 is in the middle of June, and Last of Us is supposed to come out in June. If they literally spend at least 10 or 15 months talking about The Last of Us for PS4, then that's, that's my opinion. That's stupid. The game... It's, we all... Everyone knows they officially announced it. Why give... 15, 20 minutes of stage time talking about the game that's coming about about a week. Now, they'll probably have it there, playable. They'll probably announce it like, you know, we got these great games coming to PS4, including Last of Us, available in a couple weeks. You know, I don't really, if they seriously have a whole stage time for that, then that's I'm like, okay. But honestly, other than the, or, for new stuff, the, we'll see, the, I think we'll see the order and any unannounced games. <laughs> I mean, we'll probably get it, maybe, I don't think we'll get a Drive Club Maybe we'll get a trailer, but that's about it. I mean, we've already seen what the game looks like, but they've gone back to the drawing board. So that who knows if that even comes out this year. But they'll probably show a whole bunch of unannounced games. Um, they have to, in my opinion. I want some premieres. Exactly. They'll probably show like the world's first premiere and stuff like that. But we'll definitely yeah, see. But of what? Of like, what? Of what? I mean, what know, do they have that they can bring? It'll be all unannounced. Everything we see at E3 for PS4 will be unannounced, other than the order. That's just my guess because they haven't announced anything at all. All we know, the only game we know that's coming out this rest, as, you know, if it misses out, the only game that we know that is supposed to come out this year in the fall is The Order. Um, so I don't really, unless they're going to talk about indie games again, but that's it. That's the only games that we know of. So it'll be all unannounced games. That's my opinion. It'll be all unannounced. Well, then that leaves us with uh, Nintendo. It's your area of expertise, right? What's Nintendo uh, bringing E3, brother? Shoot. Super Smash Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Uh, Mario Kart 8 will be out in May, so that's not... Oh, that's uh, right. That's me. What do you think, Jesse? I kind of fell out of playing Mario Kart as soon as Smash Brothers came along. So um, if I'm going to be playing Nintendo, it's either going to be a Legend of Zelda game or Smash Brothers. And they, they released that little video clip of... It's like a mashup between Legend of Zelda and Dynasty Warriors. And some of the people I've talked to about it, they seem kind of eh on it. But I think the concept looks pretty cool. But it's probably just because it's Legend of Zelda. Oh, that's right. They are calling that. It's like a Dynasty Warriors, but with Link. Yeah, I think it's called Hyrule Warriors, something like that. Yeah, I, mean, I remember didn't hear about that. What do you think, GT? What do you think uh, 
Big M or Big S or Big N are going to bring. I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. But uh, like when you're going back to like Phil Spencer, man, like he, he he's joined uh, Microsoft back when he was 20, being a programmer. And I think he's got his head in the game. Microsoft's going to bring out some some good stuff, and it's going to be interesting to see what else they bring out as exclusive because they've already um, kind of killed uh, PlayStation with that so far. It's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they bring, and it's, hopefully they do keep a bunch of things that are are secret. And uh, it's a bit of a surprise when they get up there on the stage. Well, I know it's good. Yeah, Phil Spencer just announced like last week. Denny Stinger he said there is already several unannounced IPs that are being worked on right now. That's even more. I mean, whether we don't know if they're coming out this year, but I think our our last four big games for this year, which is still a lot, you know, um, Quantum Break, Sunset Overdrive, Fable Legends, and we'll get that Halo 2 anniversary. Yes, like I said, I've said it before in past podcasts, we will be getting, I just it's a guarantee, trust me, Halo 2 anniversary will be coming to Xbox One this fall. Trust, he heard it here, trust me. It's a strong feeling. It's the 10th anniversary. That's the, for one, the fall. That's when they said last year, the Halo experience, not Halo 5. People keep on saying they announced Halo 5 and 3. No, they didn't. I'm getting tired of seeing these websites and journalists and saying that. Like, no, they didn't. They said the Halo experience begins fall 2014 on the Xbox One. And that's the 10-year anniversary of Halo 2. I guarantee you that's coming out in the fall. So that's four games still we have coming out the rest of the year. I think All we've right, heard but... it like this is the third time because you've said it twice already in a couple other podcasts right. too. I'm keep on saying I'm going to keep <laughs> saying it. You know, it's funny. It's like, it's like we seem to know what Microsoft's coming with, but we have no idea what Nintendo's coming with. I mean, Smash Brothers, what's... I mean, Here's... are we going to see Metro? Detroit. Are we gonna see Zelda? Are we gonna see? Are, are we gonna see anything new? Here's the thing. Does, Microsoft, does, does Nintendo new. even have a new IP? That's what I'm saying. Like here, that's the question I'm asking. I know Jesse, you'll get excited for a. I mean, Super Smash Brothers. I mean, I know you'll get excited for a new Zelda, oh, yeah. Metroid. But it's like, like standard, like new IPs. Like if they did announce Nintendo another games. Mario game or another Zelda game, it's like, yay. It's hard to get excited over that when the they've had thing. so many reiterations of I, exactly. same I mean, mascot, you know. Well, Jesse, they, you'll like you'll like what you see out of Smash Brothers because they're bringing uh, they got they've got some new uh, characters coming to the game. Diddy Kong, Little Mac from uh, from boxing from. Uh, they've always had Diddy Kong, haven't they? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. They had Diddy Kong. I think they had Donkey Kong. I don't know if they had Diddy Kong or not. They had Diddy Kong in a uh, brawl. I've been doing. They, okay. How I've, about uh, Zero Suit Sheamus? Was she in it? Well, here's the thing. I was doing a lot of research and a lot of comments. A lot of people are kind of upset that you kind of feel Nintendo's being a little lazy because you got Samus and then Zero Suit Samus taking up two character slots. So right there, technically, that's two people. Then you got five Pokemon in different slots. Yes, you do. So a lot of people are like, why didn't you just have the Pokemon trainer? Then. You know, because a lot of people are saying bring the Pokemon trank and then you can bring those Pokemon out. So technically already you got, well, so five and then they just, the new one, Ganja, Gen Ninja. Yeah, I think so. So that what counts as five or six. So already you got six Pokemon, two characters that are already same. Then somebody's saying Sheik and Zelda. Is Sheik the same person from Zelda? Yeah, Zelda is Sheik, but they they transform. See, they're they're using those as two different characters. Are? They're doing that now? What? Yeah, Yeah, Sheik is in. So a lot so of is Yoshi. Kind of like, I think Yoshi's a new character. A lot of people. Yoshi's like, always been in it. They, they didn't have an. According to their website, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Their they, website. They, the, if you go to the SmashBrothers.com website, it might be a new version of Yoshi. But um. Maybe it's baby Mario challenge. Yoshi. <laughs> I was told he stands more upright now, but that's all I've heard about it. <laughs> I know it's not that big. I mean, I think huh. this thing they got Mega Man in there. Yeah, I mean. That is pretty sweet to have Mega Man. Mega Man's always sweet. Yeah, but... Put Mega Man in Zero. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's where a lot of people are saying, why don't they have, like, you know, like, alternate, like, why, especially with the Samus and Zero Suit, like, why didn't you just have that, like, an alternate outfit in the same character? Because instead of taking up two slots, and then you got five. Right, you just five burst people. out your armor and transform into this yeah, girl. Yeah, but you able to do that in the previous one? It was like you were able to upgrade or something during gameplay? I think so. Yeah, with, with, with Samus, she had the uh, power move or something like that, and then she was stripped of her armor. And then right. they'd get it back. One thing I think would be cool, though, is, I mean, it's kind of going along with just, like, stressing out what they have and milking the characters they got. But if you take the, the X um, alien thing from Metroid Fusion that stole her armor, 
put that in there and make it kind of like Kirby where it can steal a person's power. Oh. That'd be interesting. That definitely would. Then everybody would be using them. <laughs> Intensive, like writing notes. Mm, okay. <laughs> but no, that's what I mean. Like I said, new IPs. Where's the new IP? I mean, honestly, it would be cool to show a new Metroid because we haven't had one in a while. Even fi- uh, do a F-Zero, do a Firefox. But the slightest, you know, rumor has not even done it. The newest thing I heard was that they were going to release um, another Zelda game, and it was going to be called, uh, oh, man, something. You were going to play as Link. Uh, not Link. Uh, you were actually playing as Zelda. Um, I was going to say, say, you always play as Link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't, <laughs> I can't remember what it was called, but supposedly you were going to actually play as Zelda instead of Link. But, you know, I don't know. I still I think they're... Who knows? Even I mean Mario Kart, even Smash Brothers. I don't. They're scraping the bottom of the barrel, man. Well, I don't think I really. I mean, even when Mario Kart comes out, yeah, it's fun. Don't get me wrong, it looks awesome, definitely fun. But I don't think it'll. It's not going to sell consoles. All yeah. right. So since since we talked about old IP versus new IP, so I brought up The Last of Us, and you Mason have given your uh, sign R two one two guarantee on Halo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've already had now remakes of Tomb Raider, Rayman. Well, uh, I mean, you got re- remakes. Or the, to me, there's remakes and rehash. God of War well, is the God of War. They're calling. They're calling the PS. They're calling Last of Us PS4 a remastered edition. Okay, there you go. Man, Legends. Uh. Man, Legends was a remastered edition. Tomb Raider was called a definitive edition, but let's be honest, it was basically the same exact game. It's just a remaster. Right here, graphics. Listen, my Sony, the, how they do their games, when, for one, well, how my opinion is on The Last of Us coming out, when that comes on you, that's a year old, and they're charging full price. And I don't, trust me, when people say, well, they're throwing in the Left Behind oh. DLC, I'm like, listen. This goes I, beyond Sony. This goes beyond Sony. Look at what, look at how much Tomb Raider was. I bought Tomb Raider when it was on sale. That game is still sixty bucks, and you can get the still? PS3. Yeah, you can get the PS3 and Xbox 360 version for like ten bucks if you go to the GameStop. But it's still sixty dollars for the PS4 and, and Xbox One. And you know, The Last of Us is going to be sixty bucks. I, I would be very surprised if Halo 2 Anniversary wasn't sixty bucks. Here's the thing: uh, the only one that the only one that wasn't was Rayman, which was forty bucks. See, I will, I will, but here's the thing: you have to look at what's being put in it. Like, and this, I've been actually seeing like I'm seeing these on comments on Kotaku, IGN when I just read the articles and then I look down a little bit. A lot of people are like a lot of people are saying, you know what, sixty bucks for just a better frame rate and, uh, you know, a 1080p. You go, I ain't going for sixty bucks. People are like, and the thing is, the game. And it's funny when I was reading a lot of comments, people like to say, you know, oh, I never had a PS. And then more likely, they're probably lying. A lot of people played that game. That game sold a lot, and it made a lot, and it got a lot of awards. I'm not saying the game sucks. It doesn't, but a lot of these people were saying the game is very, very straightforward. Once you beat it, that's it. They said you can go back and play it, but it's just like yeah, like when I – Heavy Rain. I loved I love Heavy Rain for the PS3. Once you're done playing it, it's like that's it, man. But I think – for pricing wise, sixty bucks. They should have released it maybe at forty, even thirty. You know, call, that would definitely that would be a, a nice one to go in for. But when I, to me, I'm looking at what's being put in the game. To me, what Microsoft does with their remakes or remasters, for one, with um, uh, Halo, Fable, Halo Anniversary yeah. and Fable, that is worth the sixty bucks because that is a completely overhaul on an old game are you sure it hasn't even been announced yet halo 2 it's Trust still gonna be halo 2 it's still gonna be halo 2 a game that's been out for but i for 60 bucks i know what was put into it i i, I know just an upscale to me that's not worth 60 bucks but seeing to completely overlay the graphics completely like well, the halo anniversary how do you know yeah, exactly that, uh, what's that i was like how do you know that, like... that, that sony's not doing that with the last of us what that then trust me there is that's impossible within a I short year time to completely overhaul the graphics no if if they if they to bring do, back if they were to, to do for for the last of us and the game's only been out a year for them to do what the, to do to the last of us what microsoft did from halo to halo uh the remake no way man they can't do that in a year's time no way that would be a completely overhaul of the graphics you know what i'm saying like what they do with halo that's what i'm saying what they do with the anniversary to 
where they had the original graphics and then the completely overall. It's just going to be. I mean, even when the uh, the banner came out on the website, it was an upscaled version and to include the DLC, 1080p, 60 frames. They're calling it a remastered edition. They are re. They're they, taking they, the they graphics the and they're thing. putting it into the PS4. They did the same thing with uh, God of War. They called that a remaster when they had the PSP games and the uh, the th- original three. All they were were upscaled. For the, uh, it, I was for thinking the too. me with Fable and <laughs> sorry with for me for Fable uh, and Archery and Halo, <laughs> those are worth the sixty bucks because I can see the amount of work went into it. They didn't just update; they, they just didn't upscale those graphics. They completely put a new overlay over the original graphics and. I'm sorry, Lloyd, what were you saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to say, like, for the Halo 2, Mason, with your guarantee and all, like, if they do bring that ish out, will they, you know, the only reason I think it would be worth 60 bucks is if they brought back the, you know, the uh, the multiplayer, the online multiplayer. That's for where that. it's skittish. I don't know what they're going to do with the multiplayer. And that would be a re-overhaul, otherwise, because then they're taking it out. I think that would be a whole those. can of worms, because that would be a first multiplayer experience on the Xbox One for Halo. Unless, I don't know how they would do that. Unless they just include the single player. Because, for one, Halo 2 defined the multiplayer gaming um, for all Halos. Unless they're, unless they're just going to put the uh, Halo 4 multiplayer aspect in the Halo 2 anniversary and just kind of... Code it. They would have to bring out all those old maps and stuff. That's what I'm saying. But at the same time, though, we've already had that map, kind of. I mean, uh, what was that? The Zan- not Zanzibar, the city one with the crane. That one. Then how is, then how is Tomb Raider not worth sixty bucks? Because that's not an that's not an upscale either. And if you look at the difference between those two versions, you can tell. And they they added they added effects. They revamped the whole graphics engine to add things to bring it up to 1080. And they charge sixty bucks for it. It's not an upscale. So what makes that not worth sixty, but Halo worth sixty? I, no, I said Halo would be worth sixty. Oh, what would it? What, 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 is two in your eyes? Is Tomb Raider worth sixty bucks? No, no. Halo is a better quality <laughs> game. Yeah. I just, now my, we're talking. Well, okay, I'm, now but now we're talking about a subjective. I would look. Now at, we're yeah, talking about a yeah, subjective that's personal subjective. preference, right? Yeah. Right. Tomb now Ra- we're yeah. talking about something different. I would look if at. We're going off of. If we're going strictly off of graphics. I would look at Tomb Raider as a half. Is there a major difference from Halo Anniversary to Halo Original? Yes. Is there a major difference from Tomb Raider to Tomb Raider Definitive? I would go halfway on that. I don't know. It, yeah, I, they I added mean, some particle effects. Yeah, your hair flaps more in the wind. So but you pay 30 for it? Is it a graphical overhaul from a game that came out 10 years ago to now? No. Halo 2 will be 10-year-old game. For a major graphical overhaul, that's where you look at the difference. That'd be kind of more of a seniority thing, then, wouldn't it, to determine which one would be worth sixty? Well, yeah, which well, one of course, because that's where you could see a lot more work went into it. Yeah, a lot more work went into make sure the graphics looked good on a ten-year-old game, whereas in adding a couple particle effects, upscaling it from a game that came out they didn't upscale it. They didn't upscale Tomb Raider. They so the Tomb Raider graphics gra- engine, the Definitive, is completely brand new graphics engine. Yes, it is. It is a next-gen graphics engine with Tress FX and stuff that they couldn't do on the PS3 and 360. That still didn't, for me, make it worth 60 bucks. I don't know that Halo 2 is going to be worth 60 bucks uh, by just. So definitive. I just I didn't know this. So it's a completely graphics engine. It's not an upscaled kind of no. like with Halo 4 and Halo Reach. Halo 4 no, it's graphics not. engine is a redefined and graphics engine from Halo Reach. No, it's if you if you look at. No, I mean, I'm not looking, our, I mean, I'd like, I mean, that's what they said. It's a completely whole new graphics engine. If you look at the review that we put up, that I put up on Wednesday, and you look at the trailer, you'll see what they added as far as what they've done to make that game, make that game look the way it does versus. Well, I mean, added, but I mean, did they say it was a whole new graphics engine? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought now, like, added- like Halo 2, like Halo, well, it has to be because they're two different consoles. Like, there's no way in the world Halo 2 is not using the same the same assets that they had 10 years ago. Oh unless no! Unless you're building, a, unless you're building a brand new game. That's what I'm Halo saying. Anniversary. That's what they did. With had, but, but they're going to use they're going to go back and they're going to use the same textures. They're just going to remaster those textures for whatever resolution they're going for. Just like with um, 
uh, uh, Fable, yeah. that game is the same. Nobody redrew that game. Designers did not go back through and recreate every one of those textures. They went back and they used the old textures from the old game and they remastered them for the new console. That's what all these games are. Didn't the Last of Us is going to be the same thing. No, it's going to be the same textures. Nobody is re- – trust me, nobody – so those Nobody's same textures are just high res because they're high res. Oh, it's impossible. With. If you got a tree that's flat, but then now it's a 3D model with more depth def- definition, they add more somebody, dimension. Somebody had to add an overlay to it. That means they had to go in and right. Not necessarily. You could start with that and scale down, which is what designers do. They start. Look at what happened with um, with Rage with John Carmack and all his games. They start large, and I would be willing to bet that if you had a look. At what the original art assets were for Halo 2, those files would be gigantic. They take that stuff, and then in the engine for that console, they scale it down to what they can put it into to make it run. That's what happened with... Yeah, but what, what I'm saying with... is, what do you call it when you take an asset, like just say a branch from Fable from 10 years ago to now? They can't just up-res that because it'll look bland. So that means somebody it's had already to brand it's new... already high it's already high res. They some... down res it for Did somebody have to go in and put a brand new overlay on there? Those aren't the same looking no. branches. All right, take take the take the Titanfall beta. Remember the whole argument over the Titanfall beta Which... and the textures? Uh-huh. For the alpha textures? They were high res textures that were down res so that the game could come out all packaged. That's what they do. No artist, no artist ever has has or has renders that are specifically small for a console. They high res that stuff to begin with and then bring it down into the game engine. And if they have to down res it or if they have to take effects out to make it work, that's what they do. Look at look at the Titanfall and this is a great segue into this. Look at Titanfall for the Xbox 360 versus the Xbox One. There's no way that Blue Point, Blue Point did a great, great, great job of porting that down, but there is no way that they built their own assets out of it. They took Respawn's assets and they res them down for the Xbox 360 to fit. Whatever resolution, I think it's that the Xbox 360 runs at. No way they rebuilt those assets from scratch. But that I'm not. I mean, but just an overlay though. So technically, the assets already there. They just kind of copied and just made them res. It's kind of like. When they tell you, I think Bungie came out, not Bungie, uh, 343 said, if you try and recreate some of the glitches, like the Warthog glitch in Halo 1, it'll mess everything up because, like they said, those were glitches that they couldn't, you know, like, you remember the old Warthog glitch, Loyal? You remember that one? Put the grenades under the bomb and you could blow it up in the sky. <laughs> yeah, remember that? like a muscle, that's, fixing, right? that's fixing game logic. That's not, that's not necessarily like physics, you know? Those are physics. Right. They're, when they rebuild, when they remake Halo 2 Anniversary... They're going to take the original assets from Halo 2 because nobody is spending – Phil Spencer is not going to spend resources with 343 Industries recreating Halo 2 from scratch. That's not happening. Well, I mean they did spend a billion dollars on games though. Yeah, on Quantum Break and uh, Titanfall and those kind of games. But they're not rebuilding Halo – you're not getting – I'm not saying completely rebuild. I mean – just overlaying the that's what i thought halo anniversary was take the old graphics and overlay them with an updated halo reach engine that's why you can switch back and forth that's it that's engine that's what I sony's mean, doing like, with the last of us that's what i mean like with the last <laughs> but yeah, but that's what they're doing they're taking the assets from the ps3 version and they're plugging it into the next to the ps4 engine what, that's what they're doing upscale because no no they are already high high res graphics that got down resed into the PS3 because that's what they had to make them. So that would just be a sharper okay. image though, right? It would be a sharper image, but they might have been native. In other words, and again, I go back to John Carmack because it did this all the time. Whenever they built a game, their texture mapping and their their textures were always 4,000 by 4,000 or whatever those texture sizes are. Now, obviously, the original Xbox can't display... 4,000 by 4,000 textures um, all the way through their game, it would basically choke the system down to frames a second. So when they created Doom, they took those assets and down them into what the Xbox, the original Xbox, could run, which was basically a Pentium 3 with 
um, X amount of memory and, and so on. And they built, anytime you build a game, an artist, a game designer is never going to build assets at a resolution specifically for for that target. They're always going to overshoot because then they can down res rather than up res. Here's an example though too. Like if they totally redid the game and did so much work to it, you would not be able to press your toggle switch and go from the old version to the new version because remember they had that in the Halo uh, anniversary. Yeah. You, you could press it and also it would change to the old kind of resolution and graphics and then you click it back again it goes to the brand new one. They just added so much more dimension and details uh, to the environment well, that that's was already what I mean. there. Isn't that tech, since we can go back and forth with the, between those two textures? Isn't that an overlay, a new graphics map overlay, the original asset? Add you can add a tree here, a tree there. I'm talking about the actual base assets. Um, if you look at because if you look at Tomb Raider, and yeah, I know the base assets are going to be there, but then Tomb Raider does that because the foliage is thicker. They use you know they've added things they couldn't add because of the power of the consoles. And they went back and did some significant work to Tomb Raider to make it work. Now, Naughty Dog claims that they are going to do the same thing with The Last of Us. So, I, mean, I think it all gets back to, you know, what are you paying $60 for? I certainly wasn't paying $60 for Tomb Raider. And if it never went on sale, I wouldn't buy it. Um, if Rayman was $60, because Rayman really is the exact same game with tinier graphics, if it wasn't 40 bucks, I wouldn't have gotten it. Um I don't have a PS4, so The Last of Us is out for me. Now, Halo Two dollars. I'm I'm thinking about that. I'm not I'm not pulling the trigger. I might think about it, but I'm not. We're talking about a, a game I can kind of plug into my Xbox now. Well, I think it also the just to have that that re-res. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I, to me, I would think more work would go into, especially how glitched and messed up Halo Two was on the original Xbox. <laughs> to see them cover up those mess ups, that would be that's what would make it curious for me to know because that game was full of glitches. I mean, it was it was bad. So to see what they did to cover it out to cover a lot of that up, that would be a lot. That would be the hackers too, man. Oh, hackers. that'd be a lot of work for them to do, <clears throat> especially for <laughs> you know. <laughs> Especially since Bungie's not on there. I mean, yeah, I can. I know a lot of people from Bungie at three for three, but that game was full of glitches. And if they are able to recreate Halo Two anniversary like they did with Halo One, that and cover up those glitches, definitely to me, it'd be worth the sixty bucks. Now the whole well, multiplayer, like Jesse S, I don't know what they're gonna do, what they would do with that, because and, then, you probably spend eighty dollars because you know you're gonna buy it just because it's Halo. Well, I mean, it's a, for one, yeah, that's a. I, well, I don't know. I mean. I wouldn't yeah, rebuy. Would. I wouldn't rebuy Halo Wars, <laughs> even though I played. No. It, I would not rebuy Halo Wars. And you know, a lot of people are saying. I know Phil Spencer said one time the Halo anniversary was just a ten-year thing. We can't keep on doing it. But I think since Halo One and Halo Two were on the original Xbox, he's like, what a bet. I think you can stop there. You know, you already did anniversary, and you know, do Halo Two for I mean anniversary. So then you both have your 360 and Xbox One. The whole, I mean, like you said, the multiplayer thing. I don't know how how they would do that. Unless they throw in Halo 4's uh, assets, Halo Halo 4's multiplayer assets, I don't know how they would do that multiplayer. That's what I was. It all it depends. Who knows if it's even sixty bucks? Originally, I mean, it all depends. That could be Microsoft. Yeah, it will be. Halo ODST was originally supposed to be forty bucks. Microsoft raised it up to sixty. A lot of people are upset about the that. Game even exists. It'll be. Yeah. <laughs> I paid sixty for Titanfall. Doesn't even have a normal campaign. Yeah, they were online. Exactly. <laughs> so you know what? You're gonna you're gonna pay the money because you like the game to begin with, yeah. and it's just gonna put more money in the pocket of the developers and the corporations, right? But we're all it's still all gonna be suckers. We're gonna me. go pay it. You kind of got a point there. I mean, we it's just paid full game for a multiplayer game. I didn't think. Why you got it? Was brought to you by GT Marauder <laughs> yeah. and the Occupied Video Games Movement. <laughs> That's right. And the, th the thing is, too, and it's all peer pressure, too, because all of a sudden, hey, okay, Mason gets uh, the Halo 2 anniversary, and it then bugs me to get it because we want to play together. So next thing you know, it's a whole social realm. That's so I go thing. and get the game. They could. What if they had co-op in it? They did it with Halo anniversary. Did. Well, no, there was co-op. Wasn't there co-op just local play, though? Yeah, just local play. Never mind. Yeah, they got to do that. Strike I mean, Halo 2 was originally supposed to have co-op, and I remember Bungie, they admitted that it got cut because of the, their time constraints, but you're right, I mean, it, it all depends, I mean, like I said, I mean, you know, peer pressure is a big thing, you know, I got people on Titanfall telling me to regenerate, and I tell them to piss off, you know, I'm not gonna do it, 
<laughs> you know you want to because you no. want that achievement. <laughs> Hey, here's here's What's another question for you too. Is that What's what, what's next coming out? Like, do you think in E3 we might see something about uh, maybe a remaster or uh, a redone copy of the original Gears of War? There was. It's funny you said that. An article just came out. Um, I guess uh, there was rumors that they were they might come out with a triple kind of like Mass Effect that rumor too that they might come out with H3. Now, see, that's where with Gears of War, like I guarantee you, if we got a Gears of War one, two, and three. Um, and I poured over, those would just be upscaled. My, it wouldn't be like a big, ginormous difference from Halo 10 years ago to Anniversary. Because Gears of War 1, 2, and 3, already, these, are, they already look amazing. Especially... Right. They're, they're, on, the, look, they're on 360 already. Right? <laughs> like they look awesome. I mean, that's for one... I mean, it depends. Now, if it's 60 bucks for all three, sold. <laughs> yeah. If they did it for just one, no, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'd say no. Because I, I already know the game already looks awesome. I know there's really not much they can do. Same thing with Mass that, Effect. I mean, they Mass Effect to me. If they did those, um, then I would definitely, uh, I'd, I'd rebuy those. For one, Mass Effect is really dear to my heart. I have a big, big open space for that for Mass Effect. And if they released all three for next gen, as I can port over for sixty bucks, I'd buy two. As long as you don't yeah, have to drive around three, every planet. All three for sixty bucks, I'd go for that. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like I said, if that rumor about Gears of War, like GT said. Yeah. Dude, all three games for sixty bucks. If they even threw in Judgment, that'd be four games, sixty bucks sold. It, for that anybody? whole series, for that whole series, that would tie them over until they come out with an entire new game, of in the storyline. I just hope that they have a good storyline because Gears One, Gears Two was the best story ever. Oh my god! Gears Three started to go down a bit, and then Judgment, the story was a little bit, but <laughs> the the gameplay was great. But I hope they get back into the big story modes. All right. Maybe they'll just Let's have online that. campaign. <laughs> multiplayer well, campaign for gears right, well <laughs> i know i know you you see you started to touch on on uh on the old battle over titanfall and its campaign so um i originally wanted to talk about I... titanfall 360 versus xbox one but i have a feeling if we if, i have a feeling that's just more of a fanboy argument from what i've read I'll online let you guys I just know know how it is. no i don't I, 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 real quick I and I just saw this today. Um, I think I'm gonna upload a video comparison. Uh, if we talk about this real quick, I thought when I saw the quick gameplay, I knew there was a little bit of tearing in the frame rate dropped. But the quick gameplay I saw at IGN, I'm like, man, I'm like, I even tweeted it. I'm like, it's not really that much of a difference. But I saw some more comparisons. Man, there's graphic pop in pop ins. Like when there's somebody running up to the Titan and it was all look moldy. I mean, yeah. no, especially for Halo was notorious for all the Halo games notorious for having popping graphics. He was walking up to the Titan and it was all moldy. And then when he got closer, then everything came to fine. I was like, oh my god! I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have to watch a comparison video. I had a, a buddy of mine. He was playing Titanfall on 360 on one of my TVs, and I was playing Titanfall on the Xbox One <laughs> on mine. So we had them side by side, and I. While I was out of a match or respawning, I'd look at his. I'm like, why is yours all bland and just <laughs> nasty looking? What, what is that? Oh. He points to the console. Needs to be remastered. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, th I think look, what don't... you do, you see the difference in the dimensions and just even just the lighting and the detail between the, the uh, 360 and the Xbox One. It's funny. Well, they, had to take, they had to take a game that was built for 5 gigs of RAM and shove it into 512 mega RAM. And I think... Let me let me be clear. I think Blue Point did a great job. Oh, I've yeah. seen those, uh, but but you know, th there's been this this thing, this internet thing, because you know how the internet is. That this is why Microsoft didn't show the Xbox 360 version because it's so close to the Xbox One version, and nobody would buy an Xbox One, and I, that's all BS. It so is. I wanted to. So luckily, luckily for us. We don't have to talk about that because there's an expansion pack that's coming out we can go over real quick. Rainfall Expedition. Yep. Three new maps frontier uh, to the frontier, including runoff, swamplands, and war games. And then there are some new uh, game modes. Burn card. Two on two, last Titan standing. Yep. They had a new burn cards, too. Um, burn cards for Titan. Um, so the, the, the map packs are uh, the three. The three map pack is ten bucks, um, unless you get the uh, season pass, which is twenty five bucks, and then you get all the the uh, three of the packs coming up. And then the game modes are going to be free, so people 
people aren't going to buy the net pack or at least going to get something. I think that's I think that's good. Um, to respawn at PAX East uh, yesterday said that they don't even know what their next project is because they're focused on Titanfall. Wow. They're not even working that's on a new hear. game. They're working on we're working on upgrades to Titanfall. That is good. You know, and real quick, I did you did you read that article what Jeff Keighley said that they saw when he was doing that feature right? He was at respawn for three weeks. And don't listeners don't take this for anything because they even came out. This was just like something small and tiny. They were just messing with as like a prototype. It was this actual single player for the game, like an actual just a solo single player campaign. And that's when that was like it was just something they were tinkering with. And I know websites are saying, could we possibly see it? No, they said no, no. It was just something small they were messing with to see what it would be like. And you know that. To just kind of it's weird to show you the stuff they're working on, but I agree with you, Stinger, about about Blue Point. Um, they, I think they they went on an article explaining how they were able to solve the RAM issue with on the 360, and it was crazy. Like they completely went in this weird direction to make sure the game would run good enough on the 360. It was weird, like what they did with the RAM. I was I wish I could remember what they said, but I was like, it blew my mind. I'm like, man, like they completely went a non-traditional development way to make sure the game worked well with the RAM. They built they built a game engine. Uh, they built their own game engine for it and plugged in the assets that Respawn gave them. I mean, they did a great, great job. That's crazy. So, Going from using 8 gigs RAM down to 512 megabytes? That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, Loyal, you but get the 361 since you don't have the Xbox One? Oh... <laughs> It's actually five gig of RAM because you know that other three gig of RAM is built for the OS. Oh, that's right. So, yep. oh, I mean, anyway, um, I think that is going to do it for us this week, guys. We've got some other stuff I think we're going to save till next week so we have some stuff to talk about because I have a feeling in the next couple of weeks it's probably going to be a little quiet on the gaming front. I think uh, I would say probably the last, well, I think when it gets in May. I think that's when we're going to have a lot of news because shit's going to be leaking out. All the rumors, videos, promo pictures, videos for E3 are definitely going to come out. And I think that's when we're going to have starting a lot of news. So yeah, I agree. But, so, all right. Good gentlemen, as always, a lot of fun. You guys uh, enjoyed it. I hope our listeners enjoyed our wonderful, uh, wonderful debate today. First time I think we've mixed it up since we started this yeah, it is, podcast. That, that small talk went yeah, man. 45 minutes. It's like, dang, already, man? <laughs> no, we tend to, we tend to, we have a lot of fun doing these podcasts. So yeah. it's, it's nice to, it's nice to be able to sit down and just talk some games for a while and, um, and do the things we do. And of course, for our listeners, we love having you on. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube page. The button's up in the upper right corner. Just click it. Please leave us some, some comments if you agree with anything we said, disagree with anything we said. Don't forget to check us out on Twitter at, at Gen underscore Gamers. And uh, as always, uh, I'm going to let you guys take it out. This is Mike Mollis, a.k.a. Stinger NLG. Along with Mason, a.k.a. Signar 212. Stan, a.k.a. Loyal Valor, signing out. All right, and Dave, GT Marauder, we'll talk to you next week. And Jesse, a.k.a. Nostos Algos 312. Take it easy. Once again, this is... Generation Gamers saying game on.